Hey everybody, Jeremy Miner, Technical Agronomist for Kruger Seeds, talking to you today on May 14th. Uh, if you remember a week ago at this time, we were talking about the potential for a frost and a freeze, a hard freeze coming for uh, this part of Iowa. And it actually did happen. So Saturday morning, May 9th, we were down into the upper, mid to upper 20s for temperatures, so really cold. And even the other day on May 12th, uh, there was a freeze in Northeast Iowa, it got down to 27. So um, it's, it's post freeze, uh, at least from the 9th, and now is about the time you wanna be going out to take a look at things and really assess what's going on. So I was up in Northeast Iowa the other day and I took some pictures and we'll look at these shortly uh, to show you what type of injury symptoms we're looking at. Corn I'm not too worried about right now. Uh, the tissue is probably turning brown, uh, starting to dry out a little bit, and eventually that will just slough off. Uh, we're, we're, you know, V4, V5 is about the time we see the growing point come above ground for corn. So not worried about corn right now, but soybeans, they may have taken a hit. And depending on the topography, uh, depending on how cold it really got, is really gonna depend on what happens to your soybean crop. So let's take a look at these pictures that I took and kind of talk through the injury symptoms and, and what we can expect. If we take a look at these pictures here, these were taken on May 12th. So three days after the frost or the hard freeze up around Hawkeye, Iowa, it got down to around 23 degrees. The hypocotyledonary arch or the crook as most people call it that holds the cotyledons on. This one here is froze completely through. The tissue is turning brown, almost black in color. Um, unfortunately, this plant's not gonna make it. Another plant here, you can see it a little bit better. The tissue's turning black, um, just completely frozen all the way through. Again, this is another plant that's not gonna make it. This one here is questionable, but I really doubt this plant is gonna make it as well. Again, when the tissue is frozen all the way through, we stop nutrient uptake uh, from the roots, uh, from the taproot all the way up through. And unfortunately, I think this one's a goner. Now these plants here don't misconstrue that color for being the black death. Uh, this is just a purple coloring. This is more of a freezer burn. So even though there's some coloring here, if you split the tissue open, everything is green and alive yet. The cotyledons are gonna hang on. There's nutrients coming up from the roots. Uh, that growing point is not frozen. These plants are gonna make it. Okay, so what do we need to do now? We need to give ourselves an idea of what the worst case scenario stand counts are gonna be in those fields affected by a freeze and what the best case scenarios are. So. Worst first, so head down to the bottom areas of the fields, uh, the lower elevations where that cool air just pooled down and uh, froze really hard. And uh, do some stand counts. Anything that is uh, burnt off, froze off, black tissue, uh, the plants are not gonna make it. Even anything that's questionable, throw those out and just give yourself a stand count of, of viable plants that are gonna produce seed for you and see where you land. Before you leave the field, walk up the hill and work your way up and progressively do stand counts as well and find out how things really are as you progress into higher elevations. They're gonna be a lot better, trust me. Um, but for lower elevations, you know, we start thinking about the potential for a replant. I'm, I'm on the borderline of about 80,000 plants per acre, 70, 80,000. Um, that's where I would consider it, but a lot of factors have to come into play. Um, we are early in the season still. It is May 14th today. Uh, if you think back to last year, a lot of guys didn't get planted for another, you know, three or four weeks yet. So we've got time, um, but it's not one of those decisions you need to take lightly. So make sure that uh, if you have any questions, call your Kruger Seeds agronomist, call your Kruger field sales rep, and have a conversation about that replant potential. We'll take a look at things for you, uh, help you walk through some scenarios, and, and help you figure things out. So from the field today, I'm Jeremy Miner, Technical Agronomist for Kruger Seeds. Thanks for joining me. Have a great rest of the week.